All right, ladies and gentlemen, section 4.4, factoring quadratics of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So that would indicate that the a value is not going to be equal to 1. So we're going to have just a little bit more work here. All right, here we go. So number 25, we're going to factor this, but always remember to first check to see, can you pull out a GCF? And if we look at number 25, I see 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. Well, 2, 4, and 6 definitely have a common factor. And the greatest common factor for that would be 2. So we're going to pull out a 2. All right, so when I pull out the 2, I'm left with x squared minus 2x plus 3 inside. And now I want to see if I can factor that. So let's see. Well, factors of 3 that would add up to a negative 2. I can't think of any. There, there are only two factors of 3. That's 1 and 3, but then they're supposed to add up to negative 2, but still, when we multiply, get 3. So I think we're done. So we can't do anything more to this one. Okay, so this ends up being our final answer. That's all we can do. All we can do to that one was pull out a 2. All right, number 26. Again, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look to see, is there a GCF? And I've got 6, 7, and 24. Okay, there's nothing I can pull out of that except a 1, and that doesn't mean anything. So what we're going to do now, some of you uh, may use the guess and check method or whatever method your teacher taught you, but I am going to use the box method. So if you don't know the box method and you want to learn the box method, okay, pay really close attention. The box method uh, allows you to solve it without any guessing or checking, okay? You plug the numbers in and then follow carefully each step and you'll end up with the answer. So what we do is we put the first term in the first box, and I'm going to color code this. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it right here in the first corner. Then we're going to take the third term and we're going to put it down here in this corner. So the first term goes in the first box and the last term goes in the bottom right hand corner. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply those two numbers together. So we're going to take the 6 times the negative 24. And that gives us negative 144. So what I'm going to do is in the corner I am going to put negative 144. And I'm going to make my factor tree for negative 144. Now the middle term... I'm going to write that negative 7 on the side. So just like what we did earlier, we want to find factors of negative 144 that add up to negative 7. Hmm. All right, so factors of 144, let's see here. Okay, I know it's not going to be 1 and 44. Um, it's not going to be, let's see, 2, let's see, 2, it's not going to be 2 and 72. No way. Okay, so let's see, how about 3? Let's see, what's 3's partner? 48. I don't think if I add 3 and 48 together in any way, I'm going to get the middle term of 7. Okay, so let's keep going here. So let's let's go. Let's see, does 4 work? Whoops, that's the wrong thing, Mr. Ellering. Okay, negative 144 divided by 4. 
nope, I'm adding those together, still not going to get me 7. Okay, so I'm just going to type the positives here and do this. All right, so 5 won't work. I know that. How about 6? Six and 24, is there any way to add those together with a negative and get seven? No. Okay, so now let's see. Um, I don't think seven works. No, definitely not. Uh, let's try eight. Well, if I add those together, I definitely would get 10. I could get a 10 out of it, but not a seven. I need, again, I need a negative seven. So let's see, 144, let's see, will 9 go into that? I think I'm getting pretty close. Aha! 9 and 16. All right, 9 and 16. Now I want a negative 7, so that would be a negative 16 and a positive 9. Multiplying those two together... Well, yeah, let's do multiplying first. Multiplying those two together is going to give me negative 144. And adding those two together is going to give me negative 7. Okay, so what do I do next? I put those two numbers in the other two corners. And it does not matter which two corners you put it in. Now what I want to do is I want to look at the top two boxes, and I want to pull out a GCF. Well, the top two boxes have 3x in common. Now I look at the bottom two boxes, and what do they have in common? And here's the tricky part, okay? you got to keep the sign closest to the edge. So in this case, we've got a negative 16 here. So the GCF is going to be a negative 8. There's one of my factors, 3x minus 8. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left two boxes, and I'm going to see what the GCF there is. So that would be 2x. 6 and 16, 6x squared and 16x have 2x in common. And then the 9x and the minus or negative 24, well, that would be a positive 3. There's the other factor. So 2x plus 3. So my final answer here for factoring is 3x minus 8 times 2x plus 3. Now, you can go and, and double-check it. Go backwards. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Yep. 3x times 3 is 9x. Yep. 2x times the negative 8 is negative 16x. Yep. And negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. Rewatch that again if you didn't get that. Okay? So, I like the box method a lot, but if you can solve it any other way, that's great. Go ahead and do that. Now, number 27, that is a difference of two squares. You notice there's a minus sign between them, and the 4x squared is a perfect square, and the 81 is a perfect square. So that means we're going to take the square root of 4x squared, which is 2x, and the square root of 81 is 9. So we're going to split this into 2x plus 9 and 2x minus 9. Now, something I didn't do on that last problem, I'll go back and do it. Okay, we're supposed to, we're solving, right? Okay, it says then find, so let me, let me uh, circle this, it says, then find the x-intercepts. Okay, well, let's start with 27. So the x-intercepts here will be... So again, I want to know what makes 2x plus 9 equal 0. Well, I would subtract 9 and then divide by 2. 
So one of the answers is negative 9 over 2. And the other x-intercept would be positive 9 over 2. So those are my x-intercepts. Okay, let me go back to number 26. I'm going to have to write the answer above for this one. So I want to know what makes 3x minus 8 equals 0. Well, I would add 8 and then divide by 3. So one of my answers, x-intercepts, is 8 thirds. Okay, now the other one, I would subtract 3, divide by 2, so that would be negative 3 over 2. All right, make sure you complete the whole problem. Okay, number 28. Now number 28, again, it takes practice, but if you look at it, I'm hoping you can recognize that it is a, uh, a perfect square trinomial. And it's a lot easier to factor it if you can identify that it's a perfect square trinomial. So all we need to do is take the square root of the 4x squared, which is 2x, and the square root of 9, which is 3. Now, I do need to check. So if I do my outside and inside, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 and 6 makes 12. So they're both plus signs. Okay, there's no minus sign in the whole problem, so therefore it's got to be a plus sign. All right, now what makes that equal to 0? Well, they're both the same, therefore there's only one answer, and it would be x equals negative 3 over 2. All right, that is section 4.4. .4. Good luck.